You know, what's that? Because one of the biggest uh, requests I get, or certainly when I sit down with a client, they say, hey, we want you to come and do a full day seminar at our national sales meeting. And I'll, I'll start an interview. Tell me the things you want to work on. And they say, well, you know what? big thing is our reps are cutting prices too much. We're, I mean, our, our GPs are just, I mean, we have to dis we're discounting all the time. And I say, well, do you think you're worth it? How much more do you want? Well, we should be 10% higher. We, we're, we're better. And I'll ask these, even these executives, I'll say, tell me in under 30 seconds why you are worth 10% more than your biggest competitor. And what percentage of even executives you think can articulate succinctly what their value proposition is and what their key advantage is? Quickly. How many do you think? 30%. No. I would say Lower. less than 10%. 10 percent. And this okay. is great, and it's a great exercise, CK, though, for, sure. for the audience. I say, listen here. If I asked you a question right now, and I'm a vet, and I said, tell me about your company in less than 30 seconds and what makes you so much better than anyone else who I can buy from. Go. Can, can you right now, are you gonna, hmm, well, we have, oh, uh, and the other question I'll ask is, uh, I, I would say this, write it down and then ask yourself, would my competitor deliver that exact same elevator pitch? And if so, now you look the same, you sound the same. It can't look and sound. So first, figure out what makes you special. If it looks, smells, and sounds exactly like what you think your competitors is, guess what? They shouldn't be paying any more for you. Okay. I agree. So now you have to find ways to differentiate and add value that now commands the 15% more. So um, first you got to become worth it, then you got to be able to articulate it, and then you got to be willing to say, no, I will not discount because that's your value. To me, and those are principles that you stand on, um, your margins will stay. In fact, I think they will come back to higher than they ever were if you do those things. I've ridden with some animal health reps, and I, I think you're dead on. Um, the ones that really know their products, their customers, the solutions, and can articulate that value, they're running their business at a high gross profit margin, as they should. Yeah. They absolutely ought to be able to do it. And it's being able to differentiate and really show that customer why you're different that leads to that advantage. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and Chris, there's a, a personal side to this business. You brought it up earlier. Relationships will never go away. I mean, if you think of even in our business, you know, of course, uh, coming from the medical side and now the vet side, it, you know, it's a small industry. Or, you know, or there's friendships and that will do anything for each other at any time. And, you know, those, those things are built up. Can you build those type of friendships with a vet or an office manager at a vet clinic? Or right, can you build those? And, of course, I think your audience would say, yeah, I've got some of those relationships. Some, some non-techno personal things to do that I think you, you shouldn't forget are... If you have a great meeting with an office manager, a great meeting with that vet, maybe it's a new prospect you haven't met. You take a stack of thank you notes, a book of envelopes, a book of stamps, you keep them in that fancy car of yours, and when you yeah. get out, you write, thank you, Dr. Jones, it was great meeting you, I hope you like what I had to say about the new piece of equipment. If not, thank you anyways, I'm keeping my eye out to bring value. Take your business card, you write thank you, you drop it in the mailbox, and they get it the next day. Now, if you think about it, if a vet gets a thank you note, handwritten thank you note, the very next day after you met with them, what does that say about your ability to serve them? Right? And I would say this. It'd say that you pay attention to detail. Your follow-up skills are impeccable, which is, is really probably the biggest of, of, of thing of importance sure. to, to them. And it says you care. That little 30-second investment in time says those three things better than you could ever. Because if I said to you, you're, you're Dr. Jones, I care, I have impeccable attention to detail, I, they look at you like you're an arrogant jerk. Show me. <laughs> yeah, they might challenge you, which yeah. would be good yeah. if they give you a chance to do it. But man, that card says it in such a, a um, I think, a, 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 well, just a relationship building way. And so you can't forget when we're talking about Twittering and we're talking about questioning and we're talking about technology, don't forget the old school Thank you. And that's nothing does it better, I think, than coming out of your, your pen. Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. And it's a great balance to you know, the technology that we have at our fingertips today as right. well.
Right. So we're getting kind of towards the end of the period. We want to, we wouldn't want to hold up anybody too long here. You know, no. Even though we're enjoying ourselves. Sure. So uh, any parting <laughs> thoughts uh, before we sign off? Yeah. Well, I would say if um, if your your uh, folks here are really interested in, in learning, and I talked about this earlier, understanding the product, the industry, and the competition, your smarts is going to be one way you can add value. And I, you know, I, I just I love what you're doing at Vet Advantage because um, you know there's three pegs in my wheel that I talk about in my book, Twenty Days to the Top: posture, pick knowledge, precise actions. You can have the greatest attitude and enthusiasm in the world, but if you don't know your stuff, you're not going to be a top performer. And I think what your magazine is doing is it's providing that second peg. It's providing the knowledge and skill that folks need to separate themselves from the pack. And so I would just encourage you to, to keep doing, doing what you're doing. And I'd encourage the, the viewer to dedicate 30 to 60 minutes each week to learn something new, to pick up the vet advantage, to go online, go to a message board. And I will tell you this, if you do this every week, for one year, 60 minutes. Pick Monday morning, it's 7.30 and 8.30, I don't, whatever it is. In 52 weeks, we're going to be a, you're going to be smarter, your, your company's going to be smarter, and have that industry, it's going to be a smarter industry, and uh, hey, well, what's better than us all helping each other out in this, this big picture? The other thing I'd say is if you like what you heard, um, you can always go to my website, which is www.precisesselling.com. You can sign up for my free uh, weekly tip and uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about today. Uh, uh, we won't spam you, we promise, but uh, you know, hey, I love sales, I love leadership, and, and I'm going to keep uh, hitting you and challenging your brain a little bit. Well, you kind of stole my thunder because I was going to make sure that we gave out your website. The website's awesome. What Brian does you know, across a number of different industries I feel very strongly about. He gets it, and we're thrilled to have him as a part of what we're doing at Veterinary Advantage. And we look forward to a long and prosperous relationship together. Good. Well, All the best. Thanks. Hey, All right. Happy selling, guys. Go get them. Thank you.